Welcome to the Talking Dread podcast. Tonight, we gather for a Women's Wednesday evening in my home where I've been hosting a small circle of women for the last few weeks. We gather to discuss spirituality, sexuality, our day-to-day lives, and what it's like being a woman on a spiritual journey in the modern world. Tonight, we gathered in communion with pineapples, pears, and dark chocolate with hot herbal teas. We sat back and discussed many wonderful things and got deep into conversation. So, grab your favorite herbs, a cup of hot tea or hot chocolate, kick back and enjoy the conversation, and hopefully a few laughs along the way. Yeah. So, oh, I uh, freaking did some research. Um, I found this um, article. Ah, oh, I'm so mad I left it at home. But it's about how, like, weed has been used as medicine and, um, you can put it in, you can use it, you can make clothes out of it and, like, all sorts of different things. And about how, like, back, you know, oh, no. hundreds of years ago, they used it to connect with the divine to understand our place in the cosmos. And then it became illegal. Oh. <laughs> I'm not and surprised I, I'm like, that. That, so that's when the Matrix started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I find that, that, honestly, like, I've been doing a lot of more reading and stuff on the cacao, the cacao ceremonies and the sacredness of chocolate because that is something that I would eventually like to do is do, like, a cacao ceremony circle with, like, real good organically sourced cacao. I found a, a company today, I don't remember what it's called, I'll have to look it up, like, Firefly Cacao or something like that, but they specifically support and grow small acreage farms in different countries of South America where the cacao plants are uh, native and they harvest and process this cacao and either add like they they separate it by what it tastes like by the region like this one tastes like to, you know has like a tobacco a bitter stronger taste this one's more sweet and earthy and then they have some that they mix mushrooms with like medicinal mushrooms not psilocybin mushrooms but I mean, Still. I can eat that, but right. Um, Same but like uh, reishi and shiitake, lion's mane, and stuff like that. Like I, I think that would be very interesting. So I was thinking of having like a few different kinds of hot chocolate with like the mushroom and the different, like a sweeter and a more darker, and have a circle. That'd be really cool. Hot chocolate's good. <laughs> She's like, I'm all for the hot chocolate. <laughs> I have no, honestly, especially in winter. For real. That pineapple is pretty good. I went to Cook's today and got organic. That's where I got those pears from. I've never seen a red pear. Me neither. That's why I had to get them because I just felt like it really went with our whole theme. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was an apple. <laughs> tastes just like a regular pear. I got some pears the other day and they were the juiciest pears that I have ever experienced in my entire life. Mm. I thought pears were like, hard. <laughs> <laughs> the juicy pear. I miss having fruit trees. Like that's one of the things that I really miss about living out in the country. So Abby and I both recently moved up here. We're from, I don't know if you know where Mina is? Down south, Arkansas. Mina, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I know where that yeah. is. So, but we're both from kind of the same valley. I moved into the valley she was in. So we're used to being like surrounded by woods and fruit trees and creeks and stuff. And so it's like culture shock. Yeah, it is so culture shock. I'm literally like the last week or whatever, I was having so many breakdowns. I'm like, I'm ready to move into the woods and live off the grid. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm actually from Georgia, from Southeast Georgia. Oh, very nice. So you? Nahana, Georgia. It's, nobody knows where it is. Yeah. Out in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah. I get that. You know, that's something that's been, like, difficult for me to explain to Drew, because he'd be like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's what's bugging you? I'm like, I really don't know. And then I'll be sitting thinking, and I'm like, man, this world is just so loud. Like, there is literally vehicles and sirens and concrete and lights and buildings, and it's just, it's overstimulating, especially for somebody who's not not used to this. But yeah. Then the more I tap in and the more I get along into my spiritual journey and the more connected I become, the more sensitive I become to stuff. So like the more overwhelming all of this shit becomes and that. like the sadder I get about mm-hmm. stuff. I feel that. And it is so like, sad the reality here. 
as yeah, well. Yeah, just everyone going to work. <laughs> because, like, since my awakening, my, like, just sounds, just regular everyday sounds that didn't bother me before, like... It's like noise sensory. Yeah, yeah. way overload. But I literally used to live right in front of a... Sorry, oh my god. <laughs> I literally used to live right in front of a fire station that they would oh. do their, um... Uh... Sirens every Wednesday morning, 5 a.m. And that didn't bother me, you know, I would sleep through it. But now, like, <clears throat> someone honks outside and I'm just like panic attack. Yeah. Like, can't handle it. Where's the silence? Where's the peace in mm -hmm. the silence? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a, a big reason is because, like, I know that this isn't how we're supposed to be mm -hmm. experiencing life at all. Bunch of concrete. And wires and lights, electricity, yeah. and just like not even being able to see the stars when I step onto my porch. And that's a sad thing because you know they're there, and mm -hmm. it's just like the literally the the glow from the lights of the city and the haze from the pollution and stuff. It's just you can't see shit, and it's so yeah. sad. On the mountain, in Cheyenne, you used to live on. You could like fucking see the Milky Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was crazy. You could take a picture of it with your phone if you were careful enough. That's how clear it was out there. It's crazy. Yeah, you, you work at uh, Paper World. Paper World. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did see that. Hey, Please. Nova. Send your friends. You also bowls? Some of them do, yes. I have eight of my own stores. And then the ones up here, they all but Rogers sell glass. Do you have to be 21? It's me or her. Oh, sorry. Okay, I was like, <laughs> yeah, you have to be 21 to go in. Oh. So how old are you? 20. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I found one in Fayetteville that doesn't even 19. I'm pretty sure They've people got a few. working there aren't even 18. Yeah. So They look young. We have strict policy. Yeah. I went into the glass boutique whenever I had just turned 18. And then as soon as I turned 18, they changed the law to where you have to be 21 now. Ah. Uh, so I, st I, had heard, I didn't know anything about it because yeah, I don't watch the news. I don't, you know. <laughs> So I walked in there and I was all set to go and everything, have my money out. She's like, okay, your ID. And I gave it to her and she was like, you have to be 21. And I was like, I have to be last week. Honestly, I think it's dumb. I mean, people that were 18 that have been smoking for three years already, all of a sudden they can't. And now they have an addiction. Can't they, even go into the store to get anything. Yeah, you know, it's, real, it's ridiculous. I literally just want to smoke out of my hippie bus. What's the difference? <laughs> literally. I'll smoke out of something else now. Literally. <laughs> no. So, I'll tell you my story before Spencer oh. comes back. He had to go unlock. I'm sorry. I don't know. He had to take his jimmy up there because somebody lost his keys in his truck. I don't know. <laughs> so, I was on the phone with my dad, and, like, my neighbor knocks on my door all the time. She's an unmedicated schizophrenic. And normally, if I don't answer, she'll just, like, leave. She, that's it. She doesn't care. And... But then there are times that if she really needs me, she will try my door to see if it's unlocked. And she's harmless, so, you know, whatever. She's crazy. So she was trying to come in, like, panic, trying to fucking get in my door. Like, she wanted in. And so I got off the phone with my dad, and I went to open the door. And she literally lives right next door to me. And she parked in my driveway, and I could see the top of, like, another white car down by my mailbox. And... As I opened the door, there was a black bag from a liquor store with five tall boys sitting in it. And I opened the door, the police car drove off, and I asked my neighbor what she needed. And she, like, ushered me inside and was like, the Scientologists have stole all the kill kids off the street. Get inside. Okay. And I was like, okay. And so we went inside. And I was like, why was there a cop out there? She's like, I don't know. He's this Harris County cop that siphoned money from some fucking guy or something and like came into my kitchen and put four beers down on the table and said that they're going to give me $50,000 today and $50,000 a day for the rest of my life and asked me if that was okay, <laughs> which I was like, yeah, sure. That's, that's fine. Tamara, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and she like gave me a hug and was like, welcome. And then she started talking about how she has the DNA for Shetland ponies and they're going to recreate all of the Shetland ponies. And then she like looked up in the air really quick and was like, Oh, I'm not supposed to say anything about that. And then like looked back at me and was like, they're going to give one to Macy, but that's
that's all I can say about it. And then, like, spun around and faced my laundry room and was like, Melissa McCarthy, that's inappropriate. You're not allowed to do that here. And then, like, turned around and told me that when I was 16 is when me and my mom and dad were killed by the Scientologist. And that her dog that has passed away is there. And that Mocha can go there, but Honey can't go there because she has all these STDs. Your dog is a whore. <laughs> How the hell does her mind think? You know, it must be so stressful. Dude, you know, you kind of want to laugh because it's just, it's so ridiculous, but at the same time, it's like, what has, what have these people gone through that have brought them to this point in their life to where I know. This is reality so I call Yeah. the police department to find out why the officer was sitting outside my house. All I knew at that point in time that he was sitting at my mailbox in his vehicle. And I called up there, and they were like, well, if there was an officer there, um, then he would have made contact with you if you needed to. And since he didn't make contact, there wasn't an officer there. Oh, boy. Literally flat out told me there was not an officer at my house. So I went and That's got on my ring doorbell, yeah. where I sent you guys that video, and you see the officer yes. standing in my yard. Yeah, it was really creepy. So I called them, and thankfully the same reception lady in records answered, and I was like, yeah. I just called and you guys sent me up to dispatch and they flat out lied to me and told me that there was not an officer at my house and I looked at my doorbell camera and I can clearly see the officer standing in my yard speaking to my neighbor and she was like oh really let me see if there's an officer in the building and then not very much longer after that an officer got on the phone and I re-explained everything to him and he took my name and number and said he'd call me if he had any questions. <laughs> so I told Spencer that when he got home, he was like, oh, no, I'm going up there. <laughs> he's like, they're just digging you around and they're not going to tell you anything. He's like, we have every right to know why there was an officer in our, our yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. Nice. <laughs> do not chew up my vape. Unless a little hot heifer. Just like well, that doing his own thing. does sound like yeah. quite the experience. Interesting morning. So, did you... It, it was very interesting. Did you ever... And then, like, she was going to leave, so I don't know if you noticed in the second video, like, the door opens, and then it shuts. That's because she, like, went out, thought she saw a car, turned around and came right back in and was like, oh, the cops are still out there. And then she was like, oh, no, wait, they said that was just Jimbo. He's doing, I don't remember what the hell she said. And then she went back outside, and then you guys heard the rest of whatever she said in that video. But, like. I love that she told you to lock the door. <laughs> I, I like to. My husband's house. road name is Popcorn. I like the, science, the Scientologist part. Yeah, that, but like I have so many stories it, about this girl. Like it, it, at one point, it makes you so wonder. when we smoke in our garage, we leave our garage door cracked. And Spencer and his friend Chad, which Cheyenne met, were out smoking in the garage one day, and apparently the door was just barely cracked. Like you would have had to have like gotten down on all fours to crawl underneath it. And she came over and like came like sliding like a snake up underneath the door like a crackhead and was like hey popcorn and like jumps down into a squat and throws her hands up in the air and is like pow 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 Holy you guys want to take a shot and had three shot glasses and a bottle of crown royal and was trying to take day shots with them oh my god <laughs> that is pow, an pow. interesting pow. life that's an like, interesting yeah. name she's been interesting to, i mean she's not she's harmless she never hurts anything but yeah, she yeah. I mean, she would come over and, like, have 17 conversations in one conversation with me. Yeah. And it's, I, I can't follow 90% of what she's telling me. And she lived next door to us for probably two years. Before, like, we knew something was wrong, but we had never met any of her other family. And I finally met her daughter, and that's when she was like, you know my mom's schizophrenic, right? And I was like, I knew there was something. <laughs> <laughs> something there was wasn't something right. There. Couldn't but... put my finger on it, but <laughs> definitely knew there was something. And she said, yeah, she's unmedicated because it dulls her creativity. She's a painter. Ah, that makes sense. And yeah. I don't know if you've noticed it, Cheyenne, but when you leave my work, that big painting right above the door is a painting that she did. Oh, very cool. And it's this, if you look it up, it's this woman called Vera Bradley, and she does all these, like, paisley, Damascus-type yeah. cats and lots of, like, old 
colors that don't match together. And so she did this huge canvas painting of one of these. Uh, did I say Vera Bradley? That yeah. is not yeah. what it is. Um, I think, isn't that right though? The one that has like the paisley? Yeah, the, no, that's like the pattern, but this is like specifically a cat thing. And now um, I cannot think of what the hell this lady's name is. But if it's almost like tribal, very simplistic looking cat. Interesting. I'll have to go, I'll go Google and figure out what the name is and I'll send a picture in the group chat. But like, she painted this gorgeous photo. She, I have other photos, I believe, of ones that she's done of her paintings and I'll send them to you. She's phenomenal. Yeah. But when she takes her medication, she's, I've seen pictures and I don't have pictures of them because she wouldn't let me, of when she's on her medication and she tries to paint and it looks like a child has done it. Yeah, interesting. That's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. At that point, she probably doesn't even know if you are real or not. True. Yeah. yeah. You know, it makes you wonder if whenever they're on their medication, if they're more, like, wired to think the way that they're supposed to, or if it truly messes with their whole, like, motor operandi, you know, like, yeah. how they function, like, they're not... Like, cause I've been, even, even I, me, you know, just being on pain medication for a couple of days, like a really bad kind just makes me feel like not, not me, like yeah. not functioning. My brain isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Like this last stuff that I had, not only did it barely touch the pain, but it just made me like, I felt like I was on dope. Yeah. And I didn't like that. I, didn't I had like to take hydroxyzine for anxiety and it's literally a allergy medicine that makes you sleepy so that's why it's anxiety uh, mm -hmm. and yeah I literally couldn't function floral birch floral sorry birch yes that's her name yes Get out of here. Oh, that sounds like an interesting morning that's for sure yeah absolutely the guy once said his cat actually smoked cigarettes. Oh. And they grabbed a cigarette. My grandma That's had great. a friend who had a raccoon who would steal people's drinks, like their alcoholic beverage. Not like water. He's like, okay. But if it's an alcoholic oh. beverage, it's his. Nice. It's funny. So. And like okay. their joints. Uh huh. Yeah. Anything. He would just sit in the circle and act like he's like, okay, mm -hmm. and then just run I'm away. Did Rod ever tell you the story about the crow that he had that would steal yeah, people's weed? Yeah, I was just thinking about that a crow. crow. Yeah. And he would like sit on the shoulder mm -hmm. and drink out of people's beards. So, my last partner, a long time ago before I ever knew him, he used to raise crows. So he's a, he's a master falconer, so he actually has a hawk, but he used to raise crows and keep them in the house and stuff. So he's always telling these stories about when people will come over if they had, he hated cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And he specifically hated this one guy that would smoke cigarettes. And so you would have to be careful and hide your cigarettes and roll your windows up in your vehicle because he would fly and he would snatch them, tear them up and go, like, put them in his, in his nest. Good, good, and, good bird. <laughs> yeah. And then, but this, the same crow that, that didn't like this guy, like, he had just got a bag of weed and he went and snatched his bag of weed and flew up with it and uh, he had to, like yeah. I'm pretty I think he had to offer something like trading for him to let him take it back out of his nest but I never got to meet the crow I did get to meet the hawk though I've got pictures of me holding the hawk that's cool oh Mick one time when I was younger I was out there playing on that basketball thing that's right beside Rod's house mm -hmm. and that bird started to chase me. He was like flying right at my head level. And I was like, holy yep. shit. I heard he was quite the crow. That's funny. <laughs> uh, we probably, honestly, we had talked about when we were together doing it again, getting back into birds. Because I was interested in it and he he loved it. Someone he could pass it down to. He was older than me. He was 38 years old. So he had a lot of experience. How many years older? 38. And you know, I've been noticing, honestly, that this whole age gap relationship thing is becoming quite, I don't know if it's if it's becoming necessarily more mainstream or if it's just being appreciated and acknowledged more, like on social media and right. stuff. I definitely have a lot of friends that are like 
obviously they're above like 18, mm -hmm. but they are dating old, older men. Yeah. My husband's 10 years older than me. Um, I mean, myself, I've always been interested in older guys, <coughs> just because there's so the maturity thing, you know. Like, yeah. Honest, you know, it's just it's it's so much more attractive. And I don't care. There are still 60 year olds that are just as immature and Absolutely. and douchebaggish as 25 year olds. Okay, I it's agree. It's sad. But I saw a post the other day about somebody saying something about it, not understanding the whole age gap thing. I'm like, listen, until you, ex it's one of those things to where until you experience it for yourself, you're not going to understand. Yeah. Because right, it's not necessarily for everybody to understand, but that doesn't mean you can't appreciate it. <laughs> because there's a connection there. Or there's not, there's a, there's a mutual something going on, you know. <coughs> I was, I was thankful for it. It's kind of way I ended it. But I've been seeing it a lot more like in my, my Instagram reels or whatever. Several different age gap relationships. I'm like, hey! Yeah. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot more like poly relationships. Yes, yeah, I've seen that too. Oh, one of the ladies that I follow. Actually, I found her because of one of the songs that I, I really like. The My Healing one. So I found her on Instagram. And she was, she's with somebody, she's been with me for a few years, who's probably like 30 years older than her um but she's also bi and she's like 25 26 27 something like that like around our ages and exploring her sexuality and what she wants to do and he's super supportive of that so that's like two of the things that they're tackling in one social platform and i think it's kind of neat so it's just showing, really yeah it's really showing people that fuck what you think man Right. Like, who cares? No, <laughs> like literally, who's hurting you? Literally, just mind your own business. If someone's hurting you, maybe you need to get out of that and try this. Right. I feel like it's just so many people are close-minded to the idea of unconditional love, you know? Yeah. They're just like slowly opening up. Yeah. yeah. And I saw this post the other day and it was like, um, along the lines of like, loving everyone because they're human regardless of their beliefs and how they go about their day-to-day -day life it shows you know how much how big your heart is mm -hmm. versus like I don't know like um, like not hanging out with people because they don't have what you have yeah like there's literally people who won't hang out with you if you don't have this amount in your bank account yeah yeah see everyone as a soul instead of that's what they are yeah well, it's just all a status thing and an ego thing anymore, you know, like, Absolutely. all with, like, the spiritual journey and with psychedelics and everything, the, the one of the main things that you hear over and over and over again is that spiritual awakening, experiencing your ego death, you know, like, breaking down the whole, like, label and facade that you've <laughs> built around yourself your whole life and just discover who, who you are, you know, discover yourself. And because uh, I was talking, because Drew listens to a lot of podcasts and he listens to a lot of like news and social society, what's going on in the world podcast, because that's his way of getting the news or whatever. And then I get my news by hearing what he tells me that he hears. <laughs> <laughs> but he was talking about that, you know, somebody that he started listening to, like, really starts taking people that have been put on a pedestal and breaking them down and pretty much reminding them and everyone else that they're just people. Mm -hmm. You know, taking all their credentials away by reminding them of where they came from and stuff. And it's like, yeah, because people get a little taste of the fame, mm -hmm. a little taste of the attention, yes. of what this can bring them, yes. and then they just build it up and build it up and build it up and lose their sense of self. And then they're, they literally hold everything that they know about the world and themselves based on all of these people that they've built their platform on I've top of. I've been saying that for so long, like the Kar Kardashians. They yeah. literally go off their name. Yeah. Like, they, who are they? they? Like, who are name. they? Like, their fake is who they are. We Every little bit piece yeah. of yeah. them is fake. Yeah. Physically, literally, socially, emotionally. There's a, there's a new show on, um, okay, no, I don't care. You already got a scratch. So He's like, I just want to try obviously, again. Didn't learn. Look at him. He's like, He's a But it's about like this woman who works like in the deep 
secret shadow government mm -hmm. <clears throat> shit and it's just a cartoon it's it's a lot like um rick and morty but mm -hmm. it's like they say some shit that you're like are they gonna get murdered for saying that you right. know and she was talking about it was like a they were going over different celebrities and it was like the Queen of England versus Kim Kardashian. You'd be surprised who's killed more people. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Think right. about it. Yeah. That is so true, though. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. Like, and people are like, whatever. Like, the people who've made it big don't eat children. And it's like, but yeah. what about all the missing children that just they haven't been found? Never face consequences yeah. of their actions. Yeah. Nova? But we do. And you start you start pointing fingers and then all of a sudden all that's, these celebrities are moving to foreign countries where there's no extradition right. laws that's and where right. everything's okay, legal. They don't get in trouble. I was talking about the they get out of it. Like or Megan, I was talking to the Disney Channel kids. Right. What are you talking about? The kids down here? Us? Yeah. You're not getting a warning. You're, You're like, going straight to prison. Right. Like, okay, but you can kill somebody. Yeah. And just flat out get away with it. Yeah. 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 If you can prove, yeah. or if the police can get paid off to not do their work. Do they even process these emotions like we would? I'm not saying I like, say we as in people. I don't, I don't celebrities. think they would. But for real. I honestly don't think that they would. They're lizard people. Let's be yeah. honest with each other. I'm a Facebook guy. Mark's I've had this overwhelming feeling that they've all sold their soul. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm pretty sure the reason that I all, like, I saw Addison Rae at first, I was like, okay, she's kind of cute, you know, do your thing. And then she started getting big, and I just feel so much, like, disgust. And I think it's because she was so willing to just sell her soul. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy how there hasn't been many new famous people. Okay, but do you notice how they all look the same? The exact same. Oh, yeah. Like, Billie Eilish. Uh, no, Lowell but Zan, like you have the, the, the old ones that are going away, and then you have the new ones that are rising, and they look just like the old ones. Yeah. Like, it's this, this whatever. They're all using yeah. the same plastic surgeon. True. Maybe. He's so but good that he's still alive. But these are younger people. <laughs> like, this worked in the past, so maybe he's a necromancer. Dude. Right. We gotta... No, we can't kill. But we gotta do something with cloning. all the A-list celebrities. They're cloning. Is my nose bleeding? Cloning. Is this Nova's blood? Are you bleeding? Is it from your pear? Did you cut yourself? I don't know that. I don't know. Interesting. You know, so that, that's odd that you say that. Because, you know, like one of the, the, the odd things, you know, because I work out at the ranch, you know, and sometimes I stay out there and I'll like sleep in the cabin or something overnight. So last time I stayed the night there, I woke up and I start seeing like drops of blood on stuff. And I'm like, Where's this blood coming from? And so I'm like having to take sheets off, new sheets that I just put on there. And I'm, th I'm thinking that somebody was in the laundry. And then I look down. So I've got like this little gash off the end of my knuckle. I hate and, and, and so it was bleeding. It was pouring ble blood because I, I bleed so easily. But not only was it like that, but all of my knuckles were bloody. It looked like, I mean, because I was like sitting there on the phone with Drew, and I looked down, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, it looks like I got in a fight with somebody. Like, for real. I mean, my, 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 and it was just bloody as could be, and this was just, this knuckle was just pouring blood. Yeah. And then, and I saw, like, washed it off and put a bandaid on it, and I never thought anything of it. And I'm like, maybe I was dreaming and, like, you know, like hit the wall yeah. or something, but, you know, I'm like, I don't do that. Yeah. So, last night when I was leaving, because I worked until like 8 o'clock, it was after 8 o'clock when I left, so it was already dark, and as soon as I walked outside, of course there's, it's a new moon, so there is no moon, and it's fairly dark, but I've been out there late at night, no moon, lots of times, and I just felt creeped out. Like, I felt like there was something out there, so I sent Rory out before me, you know, because I know if she's... Lottie doll, then it's all good. So I ran to the car, <laughs> shuffle to the car, run and put her in it, and jump in and go to the gate. And the whole time I'm driving down this long gravel road, I'm I feel like not only is something watching me, I mean, I feel like something's gonna walk out into the road at any time. Like, 
and not like a deer, not a raccoon, but I just felt like I should be expecting some kind of supernatural creature that has slipped through the veil in the last couple of nights and it's here a lot because it's all fenced in. Yeah. Okay, it's all fenced in there because we have buffalo, elk, ostrich, yeah. and reindeer. Not They're not reindeer, they're red stag, but they're pretty much on a reindeer. And so it's like, what is out here? So I get out and I'm closing the gate. And I'm not seeing anything, but I feel like there's, and there's like a big security light over me. So there's plenty of light right around here. I leave the door open, but Rory's in the back seat. Just in case. <laughs> and I run to the gate and I like close it real quick. And by this point, I'm like shaking. And I don't get like this. Like I could feel something. And so I get back on the road and I, I finally get to where I can call Drew and I'm like, I'm just, I'm glad I left because I was kind of creeped out. So this morning, oh, hey, Spiegel. So this morning, <laughs> driving down the road, and I, we've been seeing a lot of deer out there. I mean, a lot of deer, and they're just and everywhere. This morning, coming back in on the road, and there's this young buck by himself. You know, he's probably like a four point, you know, very small antlers. And he's just standing there in the middle of the road. And I'm, I'm like probably from as far as from here to the board over there. And he's just staring at me. Like for probably three minutes. And even Rory was had her body hanging out the window. Freaking out like that, you know. Barking and shit because she's like, I want to play with it. Right. <laughs> I want to play with it. <laughs> and, and he finally, he just walks off into the woods. So, get up to the ranch the rest of the way. And the buffalo have been up in other fields for a while, and they happen to be down today. I'm like, well, this is this is quite a magical morning. You know, it's kind of making up for as creepy as it was last night. Yeah. And then I look over, and there's two big old bald eagles in the tree next to the buffalo. And I'm just like, the fuck? Like, this is fucking cool. So then I get all excited and tell you guys about it, and Megan's like, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> and so... It's just like, well, what's happening? What's happening today? For real. And so, kind of makes me wonder what's going on in the world. Like, there's obviously some energy shifting. And it's crazy that today's the new moon. We just went through Halloween and Samhain, which I just started learning about this year kind of deal. And uh, we were gathering tonight. Yeah. It was just very odd. So I did actually go get a lottery ticket. I bought my first lottery ticket today. So, that's so you're going to be like a social media influencer. I'm up to 35 followers on Instagram, guys. Hey, but I will say that was all organic. So, match any numbers to any numbers. But, you know, I was telling somebody about that the other day. It's, to me, it's not I'm one of those people like, listen, I don't really care how many followers I necessarily have like you know it's it's nice to have more because it means that it's reaching more people but just the fact that there are the few people like the few of you guys you know that are consistently encouraging and supportive and I know that it's sparking something somebody's mm -hmm. gonna have the balls to say it mm -hmm. I am that person right <laughs> I feel like this is a very good thing for him to have I feel like a lot of people should have it oh absolutely yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't happen thing. anymore though, because you just turn to social media and you get stuck in your phone and you sit in your bed and yeah. you just stay there for yeah. ever. It's called disconnect to connect. This yeah. is what social media is done. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. so not good. Have you guys heard about something called metaphys metaphysics or whatever? Metaphysics. metaphysics. Um, so the cool. Facebook <laughs> guy. <laughs> oh, yes. metaverse. 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 Yes. So yeah. it's it, like a virtual reality. Yeah, he told he's rebranding Facebook. It's to help us feel like we actually are in the present moment. Instead of just getting off your phones and being in the present moment, he's making a VR so that you feel like you're in the present yeah. moment while he can still suck your And This is how soul. we get people. This is how we get people in we so many to, ways. We need to all cut down those fucking tower things. And Have you seen the, the tree satellites? No. They're all over the place. They oh, are those like, like the 5G towers yeah. that they have decorated to look like trees. And it's like, so, so that we know when to cut them down. There's a, um, 
whatever. <laughs> They're gonna cut those trees down. I feel so cool. bad for them. Have you seen um, Daddy's Home Number Two? Yes. <laughs> Where yes. they cut it down. Yes. See, that was my first introduction to those. I'm like, there's no way those have those in real life. And then I saw one. It's like this is. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's a part of the matrix. Right definitely. There. And it's like anywhere you go, you can't get out of it because, like, we were talking about this the other day, and I like have the realization that the power lines are the grid, and if as long as you're inside those lines, then you're on the grid. And it like even goes out to the outer space. Cause yeah. Out there. And it's right here in front of our faces. So how do y'all feel about like the flat Earth, hollow Earth stuff? I, I don't like, think it's flat. I don't. I don't. I don't like it. It's <laughs> round. Yeah, I yeah. think it's hollow. I think, I think hollow. No, because it's a rock. True. So, but all the caves also show us that there can also. There's no, definitely, you, I think, like sun and lava in caves. But I think the issue is is that we keep digging away at it oh, and yeah. making less, and then there's ocean. Like you said, the fucking the other day we were in the car and she was talking about the sea uh, underwater, right? The um, I was saying that I think we're the lost city of Atlantis because I had this dream, my most reliable news source, and it was so vivid. It was so freaking like I was there. And what happened is I was walking up the stairs to my apartment, and all of a sudden there's this loud crash, and it's like so. Um, intense that like my whole body is shaking and my ears are ringing and like I can't see <clears throat> and then I look up and the, it's like it looks like a piece of plastic broke like it's the sky is the plastic and it looks like that broke and there's just water leaking through and then I started here like after I had this dream I started hearing stuff about how in the Bible it talks about how God put a firmament firmament over the earth to protect it from the rest of the water mm -hmm. I don't believe in all that, but I definitely believe that the Bible does have a lot of truth in it. I think that it has a lot of truth, but I think that a lot more of the truth has been lost in translation. Very true. Was lost in manipulation to start the one world patriarchy order. Very true. Yeah. And also, there were things like books left out. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of things left out because the Bible itself, the Bible itself is a collection of literally pieces of rolled up animal skin that they found in caves buried under the ground. So not only are they translating from scripts that are from ancient languages, but it's ancient fucking paper. Like yeah. you can't tell me that that stuff was still like bold print, clear as day, right. you know? <laughs> right. And so and that's something that I've been struggling with a lot lately because I did grow up, you know, my Bible's right here somewhere, but I grew up Christian, church, Pentecostal household, and read my Bible and stuff. And <clears throat> I say growing up reading my Bible, I mean, I did read it some, but let's be honest, majority of your life, you're read too. Yeah, right. Or you listen, you know, you're in church and preachers up there listening or saying what few lines non-context. I'm one of those people, I'm like, listen, if you want to quote one chapter, I want the whole book in context. If you want to quote one line, I want at least two or three chapters before and after for context. Like, don't be just taking a few words or a few lines and applying it to what you feel. And that's something that I talked about today because I was like, I'm gonna piss. I'm pissing people off if I actually said this stuff out loud, because I said that Christianity was one of the biggest egotistical, conceited cults. That in Can the I comment on this, please? Okay, so it's just like the Big Bang Theory. It's just a theory. Literally, that's yeah. all it is. Yeah, it's all religion is in general. Yeah, yeah. and see that that's Opinion. that's yeah. right there. That word. Religion. People have made it a religion and have lost sight of spirituality. Absolutely. Because they, they, uh, I do believe that like Buddha no. and so many other prophets and teachers throughout time, Jesus could have very well been a real person. Yeah. Somebody who is 
filled with this <coughs> intuition <coughs> in, in relationship to creator. However, everything that Christianity stands for today as the religion is pretty much what Jesus himself stood against as a spiritual teacher. Right. And we have lost complete sight of that. And after he was gone, is whenever these people who had been following him for some amount of time came together and created a little club, created an occult by giving it a name, which is literally what a cult is, is a set religion given a name and that follows certain teachings. No, but and then they started hey. creating rules and laws and getting an ego and thinking that they had the power to control how people lived in a, in a effort to religiously manipulate people to live a more righteous life. Because before all this happened, you didn't have people writing letters and saying, oh, well, you can't be with this person. Right. Oh, you can't wait. You, you know, you need to be quiet. You need to wait. Blah, blah, blah. And they yeah. started making all these rules. It is forced. And it. then created it into a whole. I mean, there, it, just, and it, another it, it thing. goes so far beyond just. They're confused. Show this <laughs> Bible. <laughs> the Bible that we use today. Okay, so we're going to take it back a few hundred years. Slaves weren't allowed to talk to each other, no. learn to read, learn to write. But you're going to give them a Bible that's supposed to liberate them? Yeah. You're going to teach them the ways of Christianity? Yeah. And okay. they're going to take that scripture and teach manipulate it to work. make them think that this is okay. Yeah. This is this is the way it's supposed to be. Yep. That's like, uh, have you guys watched Django Unchained? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That part where he is about to whip little Jody and he's got all of the the pages of like the Bible with those particular scriptures like tacked to him. And it's like, see, people have been doing that from the beginning. Taking these not only have they taken the text that did hold truth and good teachings in them, that was like Timothy, like one of the younger disciples that kind of came around, I want to say like maybe even after Jesus had was no longer around but there's not a lot about him in the Bible because not only was his book omitted not included because he was different than the rest of the disciples but he was killed quite young I believe because of the way he was so outspoken against kind of what everybody else was yeah. talking about yeah like they did to whip him which is yeah oh I think that's I think that's where the whole Bible came into play. The Bible completely omitted the um, God's wife. Yeah, the feminine. Yeah, and so that's like we are so. I, I keep seeing this thing over and over, and it's like um, feminine energy runs on a 29-day cycle, whenever masculine energy runs on a 24-hour cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of women have really tough time acclimating, and that's why you know. Our bodies, um, why we have such painful periods, mm -hmm. and why it's just so troublesome for a lot of women is because we're running on a cycle that isn't ours. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's. I found that through all of my finally asking questions and being able to ask questions and not being ridiculed, well, I get backlash from my family for the way that I am. I'm beginning to, to live and to believe and whatnot, and I'm trying to get them to understand, and I'm like, it's not that I've stopped believing. It's not that I don't believe in Creator, in that, that being that literally sparked all of this energy and beauty. It's just that I've deepened and expanded my belief to be able to ask questions and understand. I'm, a very, I'm one of those people that's like, okay, you want me to do this, or you want to tell me that this is how this works? why we're doing I want to know like how it works why it works because by, by understanding the background work I can appreciate this and understand this on a deeper level and so I've been asking myself so many questions and actually going back to my Bible it's the, the text itself and 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 like really reading it with a new and open mind and it's like whoa like these are the same words but this is a much deeper more understanding so I feel like 
the one thing that keeps coming to my mind is honor thy father and thy mother, yeah. right? So how do we know that it's not honor thy father in heaven and thy mother on earth, thy father in heaven yeah. being the sun, the moon, yeah. the galaxy, whatever, and the mother on earth, earth mother? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, those are capitalized. True. They're not used as nouns, they're used as proper, or adverbs are used as proper nouns. If you want to look back at how they punctuated and capitalized everything. Yeah. And I've been, as, as, as a young member in church myself, I was always quite confused on the, the, the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how... I just went over this day and gave it somebody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so confusing. It's so confusing. But I had this epiphany that, okay, I, you know, I use the uh, comparison of the movie Nine to we are truly all God. Have you seen the Tim Burton movie Nine? Yes. Oh, oh, you, you need to it's a good watch one. It. It's you cute. I mean, it's it, dark. It, it, I think it truly, <laughs> I think it truly illustrates how <laughs> we door. we are truly God, the embodiment of the breath no, of God when He breathed life into His creation. Yeah. But anyways, going back to the Trinity, I'm like, okay, so we have. God and the Holy Spirit, who throughout the Bible says that they sit hand in hand, you know, throne in throne in the kingdom, whatever. And then you have this human man embodiment of the Spirit of God, who, as a young man, is baptized in this in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so at that point when he has experienced and acknowledged. His spirit in both of those beings. Hey, knock it off. <laughs> but, like, Holy Spirit was actually the feminine embodiment. Yep. And then you have Yahweh, God the Father, that ignited all of this because even if you if you want to like just be ridiculous and break it down to even Mary having Jesus think of her as a surrogate okay she was not bio biologically she had birthed Jesus but think of her as a surrogate as in a fertilized egg already be uh, being implanted rather than her being fertilized. Yeah. Because if if that were the case, then that would have meant that God, the Father of all creation, had chose to be with a mortal human being. Which, throughout history, that is one thing that they've always preached against. You know, like no, no, no. But I'm like, mm, you think about it, it's either this or yeah. this. These are the only two things that make sense. And if you wanna if you wanna really believe all of this, then you need to open your mind to more reasonable possibilities here. Yeah. But there's just so many levels you can go to. You know. That makes me think of how when I was a kid, I thought that Shh. like Jesus and God and Mary and all of them were just regular humans like us and like grandpa and grandma. Yeah. That they were just special because they got yeah. to connect with God. Yeah. And I was like, that makes sense why people follow like prophets and shit. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, you got to talk to God. And you know, <laughs> Jesus was not the only man in the Bible. Now, he is the only one in recorded history that we have access to anyways that was prophesied to be born and born as the son of God but he's not the only man that uh, spoke to God he's not the only man that ascended to heaven without being dead I believe there were two other prophets in the Old Testament that one was carried up by a cloud and one was carried up by a fiery uh, chariot if I remember how the story goes so essentially one was ascended into the heavens by fire and one descended into the heavens by air. Just saying, like, there's so many little things that they... And, and, and technically, Jesus would, never even walked with God on earth. He never actually saw him, you know, his true form embodied. He spoke to him in the garden through prayer, 
but there were other prophets like Moses, somebody else that actually walked with him. Somebody actually walked with God through the desert. Was it Job? Might have been Job. He was not ready for a pop quiz. <laughs> you just didn't study your Old Testament before you came to my house. But anyways, so it's, there's just so many other things that I feel like they overlook and they purposefully leave out because it leaves too many possibilities for people to really understand that they have the potential and the power to walk in that same spirit. And it's a really powerful thing. But they want control. I was, I grew up Christian, Baptist first, and on a denomination. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of stepped back away from that just to see what else is out there. Yeah. That's why I like the theory of the new man. And that's why I really thoroughly enjoy the Big Bang Theory. Mm-hmm. Because it was to say that we really didn't come from a planet. That we didn't yeah. just fly in and hit the Earth yeah. in yeah. over billions and billions of Maybe years. Maybe we're an alien happened. spaceship that and crashed. See, that's exactly what I'm And it, Okay, and I will say, if you think we're the only... Right. I wouldn't even call so, us intelligent like Angels, ones, right? right? There's For angels real. out there, correct? Yes, absolutely. So what if angels are really aliens and they're coming to our earth <laughs> to bring us something, to bring us knowledge or whatever it is, and we're really that life. We're just stuck on a different dimension. Yeah. On a different dimension. Yes. Exactly. And you have to build your way up through these dimensions with springs and reincarnation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with that, like, it's just, I like that theory so much more than the Bible. Because the Bible is just so full of bullshit. Hatred. Yeah, it really is. Exactly. I think it would be interesting to read like the original text from the the people before it got very religious. Like, uh, I believe controlling. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there were even I think that there were even if I read somewhere correctly, there was even someone in the Old Testament who consulted with witches. Who are literally just people that walked in spirit and power and used earth and herbs to bring healing and energy and blah 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 and let's be honest guys, Jesus was a witch. He literally spat to bring sight to somebody. You're telling me that someone who can just touch somebody and they can walk again isn't a witch? <laughs> Mythology. Who said love it? were bad? I love Greek mythology because it makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you under underwater is a whole different universe. Right. We can't walk underwater, but Poseidon could. Right. So he had his kingdom. Right. Zeus had his kingdom. Right. If you I think mean, about it, like so many other cultures and and societies in the world, they have these beliefs and religions, and it's not just based on one. I mean, there there is an origin and and like an all compassing power, but there's it's not just one in one way. It's like this network in this society, and I don't know if 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 those are the more realistic ones, and it's just all like breakdowns of what really happened, or if truly the world was think of it like a a we're the place where all of these different races of gods and entities landed and created their own cultures and races of and people different of countries. different languages, of different yeah. colors, of like, different and embodiments. And just got stuck on stupid. And it's like, so we... No, no. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> like, shaken baby syndrome. Please. <laughs> um, but we have all these the different cultures and different languages and everything. But we came from two people? Yeah. For real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two so, white people? Uh, <laughs> from Africa? <laughs> from the heartland? I'm, I'm a little lost. If we could... So another one of the things that I, I've really been getting into <laughs> is like the whole Lilith goddess, the goddess of Lilith, and who she was and whatnot, and going back to my Bible and everything. Like, well, if this is all... If this is all true or comes from truth, let's 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 dissect this. There were two women, okay? Lilith was first. Yeah. So it's it says that God said, Let us create man and woman in our likeness and image, suggesting that there was a male and a female higher power entity that created these two clay 
plops. Space mm -hmm. dust. With male and female likeness, physicality, but also likeness in our power, in our cycles, in our spirit. So both being powerful entities, they come alive. <coughs> Adam wants to be dominant. <coughs> Lila says, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. <coughs> and so she <coughs> does some stuff and I, some of the text that I read that was left out was <coughs> that she muttered the, the name of God, his true name, like his name that apparently, you know, is, is so sacred that... Only the few know. Yeah, like for real, God... Think about it. God, there's so many other gods and he has the audacity to call himself the God. Right. That would be like human. Right. You know, like yeah. skin so suit. Like and it's that he tells you not to take the Lord's name in vain, right? I so think that's where this comes from. In church, what did they say? I am. I am God. Right? Yeah. So you in the human form is God. <laughs> Meaning don't curse <laughs> Don't say, oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I want to do bad on this test. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do great on this test. the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. Right. Because to yourself. You're, cursing yourself. Exactly. And cursing yourself. So like, who's to say that you're not God, yourself. that you're not God, that you're not, that I'm not God? Well, see, I think we all are. God. Because we are the embodiment. We're all birthed from this. <coughs> if, if this is true. <coughs> And he spaced us, breathed life into us, gave us his actual entity and likeness. Megan's still there. Hey, you still there? Hey, you still here? It's like every molecule has like. My phone died. I just got back so in. I like if the theory of coming out of the ground. So you have two different plants, right? You have a male and a female with everything. Mm -hmm. So what if we started out as? But and seeds and then slowly turning into trees and whatever. Yeah. The theory of evolution. Yeah. Evolution. Yeah. What is not coming from? There's dinosaurs. Right. What if? Why couldn't there have been 20 feet tall? Yeah. Literally, that they've been finding recently. Right. They found all over the world remnants of giants. Yes. Okay. So the oxygen levels way back. Dude, everything was bigger. The, the dragonfly. The dragonfly was as big as this house. It was yeah. as big as a dragon. Because the oxygen dragon. levels were so high. Yeah. yeah. So everything was the bigger. Humans could have been that too. Yeah. 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 Humans could have been treated. And what if yeah, what so if evolution and, and reincarnation mm -hmm. all play a part in each other, where I our souls? See, I I didn't ever know really how to approach reincarnation because of my background, but then. Because, you know, your, your whole life you're told when you die, you either go to heaven or hell. Yep. But also in church, you're told about this judgment day where we all line up for judgment and we're determined. So I'm like, well, we, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me two different stories. And right here, this says that the dead in Christ, blah, 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 and those will be. So, so you're telling me that when people die, our souls either directly go here or there. Or they just stay in the ground and no one goes into heaven until judgment day. So if that's the case. Is that like every Sunday? <laughs> yeah, it's like, so like, because if this was the case, heaven would be very, very busy. Like if you think about it, yeah. especially if God is the one being judged and he's got a whole lot of shit going. He ain't even got, ain't got time for this. So, But he's got Jesus, his right hand man. We do the lot. only man that has been allowed to sit next to him. After his spirit comes, like, it's all so confusing. But what if Judgment Day in Reincarnation Land is moving up to the next level? Yes. And see, I also don't think that the world actually ends. Okay, because... The, so it has, there's, it has to break apart. Yeah, so, you know, when, when Jesus said that I will be with you to the end of the age. Okay, so there were, there's so many different translations. In some Bible, you will hear it say at the end of the age, and some you will hear it say at the end of... Um, time. So essentially like the end of all time. And then that age is where the um, astrology comes in with the, with the zodiacs and the Pisces and the Aquarius and everything because 
each new cycle or whatever is technically a new age and there's new profit new movement of spirit and new reincarnation where souls are finding new bodies and stuff and so it just cycles all over again and so it's like i've had a theory once like like we're in a dome like a circle right or and so all the spirit and resources and everything that goes on here cannot escape that dome. right we're just constantly recycling even our spirits you know yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i saw i was theory. asked oh you go ahead i was asked the other day if reincarnation is real then where do the new spirits come from what new spirits right there are right you cannot energy cannot be created nor destroyed it can right. only be transferred well, the earth's population is going up right well you have thousands of trees dying you have thousands of animals and people yeah. and this and that you have yeah. things dying yeah. all yeah. across yeah. the world cycling <laughs> yeah. right literally so they're just going they're inhabiting new mm -hmm. bodies yeah new shells yeah trees live for mm -hmm. thousands of years before they get cut down yeah and i think that that's how why some people like we grow up and we you know, we say I was born in the wrong era. You know, I was born in the wrong era, and it's like I'm a seventies baby. And like, like, like this. This is the t like. I feel like I'm. I don't fit here now because I've. I was. I was so deeply into my previous life that was just preparing me for this one. And I can't quite determine yet if this is the reward or if this is the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. This has been pretty awesome. Just saying. <laughs> it's getting better. Um, but. I think the thing that really they confirmed this theory to me was I don't know if I've told you the story, but my previous partner or partner again told me a story about his son. And he's our age, okay? His son, my partner's son, is our age. But he told me the story of when he was a kid. He was like in an argument with him, you know, like, well, I'm your dad, blah, 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 because, you know, I'm giving him the what for and he said well when I was your dad and told him this and the crazy thing was was that <coughs> he was born shortly after his what would have been his grandpa passed away so he never actually met his grandpa and so the way that he acts the way that he talks and even his physical you know like his mannerisms I was told is literally like his grandpa and so Wow. It, it, it was one of those things where, you know, yeah, I, I get it. I do yeah. believe. And, and so my mom okay. had, my mom had this new dog like that showed tribes. up this week yeah. and she sent me pictures this morning and my mom had this dog. Her name was Monday. Lucky Monday. We called her Monday cause she found her as a puppy. She was like in a trash bag with other dead puppies mm -hmm. and that had been shocked. And, like their eyes weren't even open so she rescued this puppy and we didn't think she was going to live but she did and she passed away a couple of years ago and so she found this, she found this dog at work yesterday that looks almost just like her she's like she's a little black shepherd and so she sent me pictures this morning she goes she reminds me so much of Monday and I'm like maybe it's her Yeah. I'm like maybe it's her maybe she's just been waiting and she knew that you needed her back she was a very calm and chill, like, soul, like a very old soul kind of dog. Yeah. And the one that she's got now is just, she's a crack dog. I mean, <laughs> she's like, yay big, yeah. you know, but she's like, Dow. I can't figure it, out. That means he's got oh, bad yeah. energy. Well, and yeah. they're great people. I mean, they're He's got something nice. Right. She just doesn't like And so it, it makes me wonder, you know, I mean, she loves kids and she loves cats. And my one of my coworkers that she met one time, she barked at him twice, ran up to him, sniffed him, and she was happy with him. She's never done that to another man, but he's got kids. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know if it's she can sense that about him or if he's just a genuine guy, but she just doesn't mm -hmm. like my boss. And I'm just like, man, I'm sorry. You know, because she's there at work with me all the time. And I'm just like, you're going to get me in trouble. Stop it. You know, but they're cool with her. Yeah. Because it's good for, because I'm kind of like security there too. When there's no one else there, mm -hmm. I'm I'm there and I keep my own shit. So it's like a badass dog. But you know, she might be. She like, she might be sensing. Yeah, because their dog sits things. It, it, it's it's can. it's just very odd to me. So I mean, like I honestly I've like been questioning, like I've been keeping my eyes on him since since she's been doing that because it's just like it's just weird. Man. It makes it makes me wonder what they can sense and how they sense it. Yeah. 
you know, especially whenever you see somebody and you think that they're a completely genuine person. Uh -huh. I think it's their eyes. Maybe. Because Maybe. your eyes are the yeah. source to your soul. Are you coming over here? And he's quite mm -hmm. short. I mean, there's so many things that could be, you know, like, I don't know. Just, like, Maybe male energy you know? and your... I mean, he may, he may be carrying a gun. You know, because that was another thing. I know I keep bringing him up, but Rod had a Rottweiler that he said that any time somebody came in the house, that dog would just sit there and growl at him and would be almost aggressive at him until he's like, dude, you're going to have to pull your gun out so 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 she can see kind of deal. I'm sure and they would. And that. like, okay, I'm your best friend now. So it's like, sh like the dog knew. <laughs> right. And so it's just like, man, dogs are so intelligent. Yeah. Makes me wonder if that is the previous life or if that's the reward. <laughs> well, okay, so my pit bull growing up was terrified of guns. No idea why. Hmm. Nobody ever shot a gun at her, ever In pulled life. one out and beat her with it, nothing like that. Yeah. But as soon as daddy would pull one out to do anything with it, she would start growling and barking at it. It's like they know it's right. Like so it's how got bad, know it has bad energy. Human, maybe yeah. shot by a gun. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 exactly. Um, or they could sense a human that was shot by the gun still on the gun. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, there's so many things. But, yeah. like, yeah. if this so gun is brand shot. new and he pulls it out of the box, oh. she's growling yeah. at it. She's yeah. like, <laughs> get it away. So, yeah. I have a no book. No more for me. It's called Surviving Death. Mm -hmm. And it talks about these kids that see their past life and explain it to people. Hmm. And terrible? it's accurate. They yeah. go back, they check history, it's there. Yeah. This little boy died in Japan. Oh, yeah. In 19, whenever, World War II, uh -huh. Hiroshima. Okay. They take him out there and he throws flowers on the gravesite and breaks down crying. Wow. And immediately turns into this whole different person. Yeah. It's like he and reconnected with himself. Right. Like he's just remembered everything he went through. He's yeah. remembered it since he was two years old, crying in his crib, crashing planes together. It's yeah. How he died. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all should definitely read the book. I found it at Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Wow. Love books a million. One wow. of the two. But it's called Surviving Death. It's got a white cover. But it's realistic. It's more realistic than the Bible is. Yeah. Because. And then they actually research it yeah. and find out that these things really happen. Yeah. Little boy says James, whatever his last name was. Dude looks it up. His actual name was James. He actually died in this site. He actually died uh, because the plane was shot down yeah. in the nose. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Kids so, are like closer to the veil. Than they anywhere. are. Yeah. Yeah. After the age of six or so, that veil is kind of gone. And you start to live your new life. Your past life is gone. You yeah. start making yeah. friends and remembering things. And see, and, and, and even even as much as we question and, and discredit the Bible, still having things that I think are may historically be accurate. Even Jesus said to have to suffer the children to me, like let them come to me, like let them let me love them. But He also told all these hierarchy people and and studied people and disciples that. Unless you have the faith of a child, you will not enter the kingdom. And to me, that's saying if you don't, if you are not as open minded and in touch with the imagination and the creative energy as a child is, you will not ever be able to enter these realms and this, this level of healing and spirituality and connection. Because like you said, they grow up, they start getting mixed in social life, and they start making friends, and they start to get, you know, taught how to live and how to look, and they lose sense of who they are, and then here you are in your late teens and 20s, That's no I sense like of identity. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like to teach her everything. I mean, anything that I go through, she's right there. Yeah. She likes crystals. She yeah. likes rocks. Yeah, absolutely. She likes everything that I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, my son said it himself. She walked, He was walking up the stairs bitching about work. He was right there behind her and he was talking to her like he was talking to me and he said, holy shit, I was having a conversation with a grown ass woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, like, chill. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Take a step back. Yeah. Take a step back from the phones. Chill with people like we yeah. are right now instead of... Yeah. 
oh well I farted nobody <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. like just so sad yeah, this is why this is why this has been so important to me. This whole thing, and you can ask Abby, and you can even ask Taylor. Like, as soon as I moved here, I said, "This is this is what I want to do. Like, this is the purpose that I have set for." So I met Taylor on Tinder, and I met uh, Megan on Tinder because I didn't know how to meet people. Yeah, right. Like, I'm in, I'm in a new place, and it's it's it was still when COVID was still kind of touchy, and people didn't know how to socialize, and things were finally starting to open back up and stuff. But I didn't know how to socialize because we didn't have stuff like this where I'm from. Right. So I'm like, how am I gonna meet people? I'm like, oh, Tinder, because you can do it by like your distance and whatever. And and so I'm, I'm I met people. I'm like, all right, this is how I start branching out, connecting with people that have the same likes and interests as me, and and. I didn't think it was gonna work, you know, and didn't think that I was actually gonna and then I actually went to one event, one social event in Ben Bentonville, the art party, and, and I met um, a couple ladies in a box truck. <laughs> they had it set up it was like a spiritual, a very, very neat and energetic intimate space and they had like a nature mandala that crystals and pine cones and sticks you could sit there and meditate and, and add to this communal mandala the kind of thing it was beautiful and they had sound bowls going and like a flute like they were making the sounds and just creating a very wonderful space and I connected with them and I've actually met with with Misty a couple of times who is building a huge platform and has invited me to help her along with stuff and so it's been just so cool how yeah. Literally everything that I that I hoped at least that I would connect with or, or create like it's it's happening, you know, but it's so important. It's so important. That's why even though it's not my child, I'm building a relationship with him and so I'm like I can offer different perspectives of things. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so like I I, I don't, you know, I'm not hateful towards anything, but I, I discourage the tablet and I discourage the extra shows in the morning, you know. And so I've been doing more herbal stuff at the house and getting into magic and whatnot. And he's been asking me questions. And so I did like a little magic simmer pot on the stove the other day and he wanted to help. And so every herb and flower he got to put in and he got to smell it and he got to learn about what it was for and what it could do and what we could use it for. I taught him which way to stir it and he'd be like, can we go stir the pot? And I'm like, you damn right, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm probably stirring the pot with your mama. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me a question if he could do something and I'm like, mm, no, but I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was like watching TV in the morning. And he's like, well, my mom... And I'm like, I just bent down next to his face, and I'm like, well, guess what, buddy? I'm not your mom. <laughs> so we're gonna do this instead, right? Right. <laughs> you know, like kind of deal. Be like, you know. Well, Cheyenne lets me stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm also I've never actually met his mom yet. But I, you know, I'm always like. Be good for your mom. You know, he really talks about her because well, that's his mom. You yeah, know, yeah. like. That's his life. Yeah. And she's now part of my life, and even though I haven't met her yet, and I don't, I don't have a problem with her as long as she's treating this kid and his dad right when she needs to. Then that's all that matters to me, you know. But you know, like, oh, she looks like my mom. You know, like talking about somebody on TV. Well, she's very pretty. Your mom must be very pretty. You know, stuff like that. Shine. But you know, it's just—it's just, just, just not the way life is. Yeah. And it's sad that people want to just want to hate people and find ways to be negative towards people instead of trying to find the positive things and trying to. I used to be a harsh person, guys. Like I get so freaked out and 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 just that's why I drink. So that way I, I wouldn't antsy and attitude -y all the time as I would. I'd get super and now it's like there's no point. It's all about you now. There's no point in it at all. No. Yeah. No. Because I, all these people are just they're just ignorant. That's all it is. So it's all this self reflection. I was yeah. a bartender at one point and one of my regulars told me, Why what's the point in arguing? If it's if it's not gonna matter in a year. Mm -hmm. Matter in ten years. Yeah. Why does it matter now? Yeah. 
So what's the point in being angry at all? Yeah. Because yeah. it's done and over with. Yeah. It's like literally you what are you mad at? Bring it back. Yeah. yeah. You just can't it's physically impossible. And I'm sorry, but that person did not offend you and that person did not make you mad. And no no you t- chose to react to a situation and yes. that is your response. Yes. And nine out of ten times it is unintentional yeah. the way that people hurt people. Yeah. One out of ten times people are hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there are people out there like that. Yeah. I know somebody that is intentional. Yeah. Because they just don't oh, no. give a shit. Because they just have to... Nova! Hey! <laughs> it's because they're unhappy. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't know how to love their themselves. lives, but they don't know how to. They want to pick on everybody else and yeah, find right. everything they're wrong with everybody babies. else so that way they don't have to figure out what's wrong with them. Exactly. So they would feel like they how they pick. <laughs> And they stab at yours to see if they can figure out exactly what is wrong with you. Mm-hmm. When in fact, they're trying to find if there's anything wrong with you that's wrong with them. Yeah. But if yeah. Because nobody, so, you're looking at yourself. Because society wow. paints a picture of, of perfection that you should be acquiring and striving for. When in reality, there is no such thing as perfection. Like, literally. I, I like some uh, some thought that I had today. Was that literally the only entities capable of perfection is nature. I was about to Because say. it has no free will. Because it has no need for free will. It simply exists. That I love being an earth sign because it makes me appreciate earth people. Yeah. I'm driving all the time, guys. I take 49 every yeah. single day to work. And I just admire the beauty mm-hmm. out there. Oh, yeah. And then I go and I sit at the lake and I admire the way that the rocks look, the way that the formation just drops down into the water and you just sit there and yeah. peacefully relax. Nice. You know? Yeah. So that is perfection. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to keep it that way and we're not. Mm-hmm. We're tearing it down. Yeah. Yeah. Concrete over it. And that mm-hmm. makes me so mad. And man. another thing about the Rory, hush baby. The Metaverse is from a cyberpunk fictional book that they called The Metaverse, and it was concrete, Mm -hmm. VR, and anywhere you went, it was ads and fast food. Yep. That's what it's all about. Yep. So they created another one, but it still had the social status that if you don't do enough, you're going to be on bottom. Yeah. Yep. I was like, you had a chance well, to try I mean, over and you that's fucked up again. life in general. If you don't do enough, you're going to be a bottom. I started out as a clerk, made my way to store manager, and yeah. now I'm regional manager. Yeah. I'm at the top of my ladder. Yeah. And what's sad is that, that striving to live in that kind of society is what people think that is the only thing to do. Yeah. No. And it's no. so sad. They think that going out in nature is a vacation like it's a one time deal like yeah. people that go on like mushroom trips and have that great experience I think that's like a one time deal no this is a connection this is an experience you know this is the, this is opening doors you know you right. have to oh it's like why do you want to live like that like yeah. this house man I love it I love having this spot but it's like I want to put my tent up in my yard I just want to yeah <laughs> I feel very disconnected and I think it in the spring, we need to do a group camping trip. Yeah, I'm so down. That would be a lot of fun. camping. That's a great way. That's yeah. That's a great lot. Uh, yeah. I don't know a why we did that. Campfire. <laughs> Maybe we'll have so. Maybe many. we can just go camping in Texas because there it's just <laughs> so hot. Hot all year round. <laughs> Maybe by spring we'll have so many people we can have like almost a retreat type That'd be camping a lot of fun. deal. Oh, That'd be very cool. Like a little festival. I happen to have a really good connection to a great venue. We could go on a river and like camp and do psychedelics. Great. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm here for it. Thank you for tuning in this evening and listening to the Talking Dread podcast and joining us for Women's Wednesday in my home. I hope you enjoyed the conversation, got some gainful insight to some of the topics that we covered, and hopefully got a few laughs along the way. I apologize for the ruckus in the background. We had dogs also socializing, and it was an eventful time. As 
always, we have a great time and great communion, great fellowship, and we cannot wait to gather together again soon. Please join us again next week when we come back together and reconvene and discuss life as we know it as a woman on a spiritual journey in the modern world. I love you all and thank you again for listening. Peace, love, light, and sweet dreams.